Okay, folks, so we're ready for our next session. And um, Eric Chang from SK Telecom, take it away. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, it's a very nice to meet you. My name is Eric Chang. Um, a program manager of SK Telecom. I'm working on um, MBRA, which is MBME JBOF. So it's an uh, honor to present our kind of concept and then give you some idea about our kind of initi initiatives. So um, next, please. So this session will discuss a little bit more uh, high level, not very technical details. Because we worked on um, this project for a year, less than a year actually. So we try to develop the concept and proof of, kind of develop, develop the proof of concept first, and then work on the production version with the high quality and reliability to support our tackle or infra, uh, enterprise infrastructures. So this session will discuss the need for a new level of efficiency uh, for the new uh, applications such as deep learning and AI applications, and new rack scale story technology for real-time applications and for more efficient uh, infrastructures that require the tackle or the enterprise systems. And then we'll talk about a little bit more about like, like uh, MVRA and beyond that. Next, please. So we'll talk about new requirement for modern um, the tech tackle the infrastructures. The recently uh, the different level of efficiency required for the new uh, respond to new application demands from the tackle perspective. So we are a kind of um, unique uh, the company to drive the infrastructure the efficiency from the tackle perspective because. Normally, Tyco is using existing solutions or, or the, the part already developed. But we try to build our own kind of infrastructures by working together with the, the guys out there and build an ecosystem for the Tyco, the applications. So um, up to now, like a big data analytics or processing apps been um, focused by many, many guys. But I think we need to, uh, we found some different demands to take a look at in a different way when it comes to um, the real application apps um, required in the market. So at the big data processing era, I think the big, da the big data DV, or data goes to the database, um, big data database, and then users will find the cause and then predict what's going on next. But um, as the real-time analytics apps comes in, then we think that data goes to real-time apps and they need to help the users find or uh, help the decision making. And, or the application itself need to do what the users need or order. So the difference between the big data processing and real-time apps is that the real-time apps is more focused like live data analysis and decision making. And it requires uh, the low latency, low latency because it need to be done in the real time. And live streaming data sets are kind of need to be analyzed in real time as well. And terabyte of data, which is a little bit smaller than big data processing. And decisions should be done um, in second or at least a minute. So to respond to that kind of app apps, um, we need to take a little bit different approaches to the infrastructures. Next, please. So uh, in some summary for the uh, requirement for the real-time real, real -time apps is going to be like a time critical, because that should be done in a minute or a second or a minute, and mission critical as well, because the data or in, uh, service interruption happen, then uh, that cause a lot of problems or serious problems as well. And diverse processing requirement is coming uh, in a kind of, which is kind of new uh, compared to the big data processing area. Because one of, uh, before that, kind of global uh, applications or the solutions can cover many things. But with this, since there are some specific uh, requirements there, so one of few universal solutions cannot cover that variations. So different implementation, optimization, and different, uh, that, that should be optimized for different environments as well. 
And there is some variation in reason, language, and customs. So for example, like SK Telecom is the largest telco in Korea though, but the environment and the custom in US and Korea is totally different. So the, there's some local optimization is, is totally required. So we like to focus on like that type of things as well. So as you said, we have a kind of our own language based like a imagine eco type of services as well, which is called Nugu. Yeah, just that type of things is coming uh, quite large. Next, please. So this is kind of our uh, starting point to build the infrastructures, which is MVRA based on it, uh, all MVM SSD. So our first session in this room, Lightning, is talking about um, the MVME, massive MVME storages, and Brian, Can Brian Canyon is about kind of the core storage. So we're back on like uh, uh, all fresh again. So this is more about like a Lightning project we have talked about in the first session from Facebook. So we like to put additional features onto their project uh, optimized for tackle or enterprise market. So this is built or architected or built by SK Telecom. Actually, we work with the local ODM to build this. And we like to talk about that a little bit more. Well, it was uh, MVR D20. Uh, this is the second version internally uh, and prototype as well for now. So we focus the PCIe uh, directly connect to CPU because current, uh, so far the storage has been seen as like a storage system as a pool. But we like to provide a more DAS pro, uh, approaches with a massive MVME chassis, I mean drive and chassis. So we're going to put like a 20 drives into one new chassis and provide a PCI connection so that the users can connect to the JBAT through the PCI cable. Then through the enumeration process, then uh, the host, the server, can see um, some of the drives in the uh, this array they, based on the configuration as DAS. So although this is look, this look like a, just a JBuff, but through the PCI connection, the host will see this as just um, directly attached storages in the server. So as a total, like a MVRAD20 support like a, a 52.8 gigabyte per second as sequential and 13 to um, 13 to 2 13.2 2 million RF random access. So you can take a look. You can check out this on our booth in SK Hynix. So we shared a booth with SK Hynix. So you can see this um, the chassis in C9 booth as well. So to organize this whole product, we need a we need help from the Return a card on host side as well to make it connected. So we build the MVRA and Return a card as well to provide a connection between server and JBuff. But we like to put um, a little bit more time for the Return a card because we redesigned the Return a card uh, through our kind of internal kind of testing process. So the existing Return a cards was not fit for this kind of applications we redesigned. So we will share that. Next, please. So this is the thing. So we redesigned the retirement card based on micro semi chip. Um, although uh, the retirement card out there is using different chip, but um, we had uh, some problem in terms of like a BIOS compatibility and then some hot plug issues. So we redesigned the card uh, based on micro semi chip. So this is kind of how a uh, high level block diagram and PCI layout for the retirement card. So if you're interested, then um, we can share some information with you. So we are not a, actually a hardware builder for this. So we are kind of pretty much open to working with any hardware uh, the suppliers and vendors. So uh, we are kind of a tech company. So we, we are kind of in the focus to utilize this type of infrastructure systems for our services to better provide various services to end customers. So we are pretty much open to working with any hardware team to, to build this together. And this is more about the JBuff. So right, the, the picture on the right side is a high level architecture. And left hand side is real, the switch board. So with, we implemented dual switch. So this is kind of second generation of our kind of prototype. So first it was, uh, First product was 
the single chip based, although that, that didn't go to in production. And this product also won't go into production. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, about our production version, though. We try to see the performance improvement, how we can uh, increase or improve the performance by putting double switches in the switchboard. So we realized uh, double, exactly double bandwidth in our random IOPS uh, with the two switches on the board. So it was very exciting. Next, please. Now this is kind of high-level concept of how we connect to the servers from the MVRA point of view. So MVRA, since MVRA has um, um, 64 lanes to host side, and we recommend like a, by eight um, the connection to the host side. Technically, by, by, by four is possible, but uh, utilizing by four only like a, it's hard to differentiate it between like a server attached cache. So we like to provide a uh, by eight to host side. So up to the like, eight servers can be connected once one server is connect, uh, occupied like by eight to the MVRA. Or the server can use like by 16 with the two retirement card or no one retirement card with the more switch to lanes inside the retirement card, then that's possible too. And utilizing PCI fabrics as like a MVRA could be seen as like DAS through the PCI fabrics. So we can utilize that kind of P2P DMA function through the G GPU. So GPU type of things will be discussed the end of the, this presentation though. But uh, we try to integrate this x86 and GPU server and then VRA as a whole and then try to connect them and then provide a P2P DMA between GPU and uh, the storage is by passing CPU to utilize CPU to the different applications of different purposes. So, that's a, one of the key advantages of PCI fabric or PCI storage is that utilize PCI in, uh, kind of interconnects. So this is kind of evolution of our MVRA. So the left hand side is like a yesterday product, which is shown in the last Fresh Memory Summit. So that's based on single switch version. And today we just um, built the double switch version with the single board. And um, we put the 20 drives, but 10 drives are assigned to one switch, and another 10 is assigned to another switch. But in the third version, which is gonna be the product, uh, going to production, is that we use like two separate switch board, make it half swappable, and then we're gonna use uh, dual port NVMe as well to provide reliability. So as I said earlier, uh, we like to put a, a little bit of additional features into like an NVMe JBOD initiative for like, tackle enterprise, uh, enterprise the infrastructure applications because this product is pretty expensive, <laughs> it's very pricey. So uh, without that kind of protection, a, a little bit hard uh, for users to get adopt. I mean, uh, to adopt this product. So we think that reliability is a kind of key for this type of of expensive uh, and reliability required the application. So that's why we like to put our HA capability into the, this product concept. So we'll go into production with the third version and we are still in the middle. Um, so still, we can provide some hardware for testing and to uh, go through some POC process. But um, at the end of the day, we're gonna provide um, the third version to any uh, the partner customers we would like to work with together. Or we can work uh, three way, four way, uh, co uh, the co work is possible, but including like uh, hardware vendors. Yep, this is kind of real test result. Uh, so to compare like a C20 and D20 with single switch version, and double switch version, as you can see, like a, exactly the performance doubled because they are kind of quite straightforward and simple. So it doesn't have to like a, be uh, reduced or something. So as you can see, like throughput wise and IOPS wise, they doubled. So we expect um, the current steel of the uplink is bound to like by 64, while downlink is by 80 with the 20 drives by four. Uplink is the gating factor or bottleneck for the, uh, the increase of performance. So 
at the third version, which is production version, we like to increase the port or lanes to the host side to enhance like a performance as a whole. Right, um, to check, um, okay. Uh, this, uh, I'd like to talk about future of RA and beyond. So um, not just only provide a JBOF function, we like to provide some um, this management pool management system as well. So we like to work with the uh, partners to, pro to, to provide that functionality to the host. So this is more aligned with the RSD uh, driven by Intel. So we like to put like MVRA in a rag and then try to, uh, although the, physically there are a couple of MVRAs in the rag, but from the user point of view, application point of view, multiple configuration is possible through some uh, Ratfish, RSD specs. So we, as we go through that kind of management interfaces, we can provide multiple configuration and provide a kind of composition, decomposition of the method to the application level as well. So as I talked a little bit about GPU stuff as well, so we like to work with other the guys and then uh, the hardware guys for the GPU too. So we can provide a CPU, memory, GPU, and drives as a kind of a system in the management level, uh, logically. So if all the physical they are separated, we try to provide a logical configuration through the uh, RSD uh, interfaces. Yep, this is more about like a next version, which is going to be available late this year. Uh, this is a more specific high-level high, high diagram on our uh, new version, we call E20, though, but um, the host server side, they are stay the same, although we try to uh, modify some retirement card to make it more reliable, but they're almost the same. But the difference is, like in the JBot side, we like to put two switch board with a single switch on the, in the each board, and they try to connect the board to the drives uh, through the dual port of uh, dual port capability of drives. So we build uh, SKT, build SSD as well. So our drive is supporting dual port. So by 40 downstream, by A, uh, from, the switch, from the single switch point of view, by 40 downstream and by 40 upstream. So since we have two switches, by 80 in total, and by, eight, uh, by 80 total in downstream, by 80 in total to upstream, upstream. that's the target. So still, still working on if it's feasible. So uh, dual port is, is, is key to, for this, and then splitting that, making hot pluggable, hot swappable on the switchboard are another key, uh, the part that we uh, enable. And BMC and switchboard, uh, uh, PM, uh, PCI switch need to be uh, connected to make sure they are, they are working. So there, this is another kind of uh, new era we need to implement. So we work together, I mean, we work with uh, the other partner guys. And the rerouting, and once the failure, once the switch board fail, then host side, the drive on the host, drive, uh, host server layer will reroute the path. So we go through the other switch and the access the drives, although the performance is gonna be the half. But while the performance is half, uh, uh, the users need to hot swap the, drive, the switches while the data is still there. Um, uh, another topic for the MVRA is going to be the SRV and MVRA fabrics. So SRV uh, will provide more flexibility for the users to be seen as like multiple devices, not as kind of physical drives. So we like to provide more uh, flexibility to users, just uh, as if like a user is using multiple the MVRA drives. So that's all another kind of key the area we are looking at, but. That's not going to be implemented in our the next version. So this is a more topic for like a 2018 version. And MVM Fabrics is one of the interesting part that we are looking into. So um, we're in discussion, or we're looking for a partner to, to work together for the MV, to enable MVM Fabrics as well. So through the MVM Fabrics, uh, current MVM ver, version based on PCIe only can be kind of put in the rack within the rack of MVRA, but through the MVRA fabrics, we expect a cross-rack solution gonna be possible. All right, next please. 
All right, this is a totally different project uh, from the uh, MVRA, from hardware point of view. But as a kind of integration project, this is, is part of MVRA project as well. <laughs> so kind of, uh, it's a little bit tricky, though, but try to introduce our kind of initiative about the uh, GPUs. Because as I talked to the, uh, in the first slide and earlier, uh, the deep learning and AI application is, kind of, is, is coming and emerging so fast. So we like to respond to that demand and we like to build our own infrastructures based on our architecture and design based on like this. So um, I saw many initiatives from uh, the GPU side, like uh, HGX1 from Microsoft and Big Basin from uh, the Facebook. We love that. So we would like to utilize that kind of uh, resources. And after integrating those resources together with the MVRA, then we can make a value add on the uh, infrastructures to provide a better service to end customers. So, uh, we're still working on this. As this is kind of starting point, uh, starting stage of us. But um, after we integrate it, and then we'll show more kind of technical, the result based uh, through the some tests. So we'll be happy to share that after we run some tests based on that. So summary: real-time application will demand infrastructure innovation. So although Tyco is not a hardware guy, so uh, we like to. We we'll take the lead on the uh, infrastructure side to to make it more uh, make it efficient the the services and applications, and higher level operating efficiency and lower latency must be achieved to respond to current emerging demands and applications. SKT Embraer A is a essential the building block with the um, which to push to uh, push the envelope of infrastructure cap capability. So we like we think that. MVRA just just essential building block. Not that can achieve everything, but by putting MVRA as a JVOD into the rack, then that can achieve many things that can be done that cannot be done with the existing or conventional storages. So upcoming MVRA will provide much higher available manageability and reliability, and also that could be combined with the GPURAs uh, to provide a different level of efficiency or some other type of applications as well. Let me check. I think uh, we have a couple of minutes to take any the question. This is kind of uh, pretty much about my presentation. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. Right. So the question is about our plan is to use like native dual port NVMe SSDs, right? So yes, uh, we're gonna use like, active active dual port NVMe SSDs, and we are working on the drive side as well in, from the different group of team in, inside uh, SKT. Yeah. So one other question. Uh, yep. Why did you settle on a 1U design? Uh, what was the you know, kind of criteria that drove you for that? Let's say 2U. All right. Uh, what, what was the question? Sorry. Why, why did you pick a 1U? Uh, all right. So why, why, why did you choose 1U rather than 2U, right? Uh, well, 2U possible, technically, but we like to for like a minimal and a compact size, the chassis because MVME is quite expensive for, even for now. So putting like a 40 or 80 drives initiative is there that we can make a two year or three year to put more drives in there, right? But since MVRA is like a MV drive itself is very small, right? 2.5 inch. So we with the putting with putting 20 drives into the chassis, we can realize one new uh, the appliance with that. So we don't have to kind of build like a heavy uh, appliance with a smaller form factor of the drive. So yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, if there's any questions. Since I'm gonna be at the C9 booth, please check out our D20. And if you're interested in working with us or uh, use, use or test it, uh, this product, uh, we'll be welcome. Thanks for participating in the presentation. Thank you.